Now look at this when we get up here to 100% noise attenuation. It's pretty quiet. Right? So you hear that. But you also hear this. You're listening to The Dangerous Mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. No excuses, no BS, no pants. So what if you could remove the noise from behind your recording? My VO pal in Japan, Nick, really inspired me to start thinking about that question. And then Eric Dahlberg over at UADforum.com suggested I try the CVox plugin, the UAD CVox. So I'm going to demonstrate the CVox as I tell you a little bit more about it. But first, what you're hearing right now is my normal sound. And I'm using the expander and the gate together in tandem to really remove the perception of noise from my recording. So you don't hear noise in between the syllables that come out of my mouth. And clients really like this sound. This is the same exact setup I've used in close to 4,000 commercials. And I can tell you clients really dig it when you give them a, a recording that is really silent. So this is my normal sound. But what if I take the expander and gate out? Right? So the Earthworks SV33 is a fairly noisy mic. And I've talked about the noise floor on this mic and how to, uh, how to work with it in a previous video. But yeah, it does. It sounds like I'm at Niagara Falls. So what if we could take that noise out? Would that work? What would happen? So right here, I'm going to turn the CVox on. Now it's in bypass. You're not hearing any sort of noise attenuation. And I'm going to dial it up to 50 here still on bypass. And then all of a So this is noise. This is 50% attenuation. Right? So bypass off, bypass on. Wow, right? Pretty interesting. Okay. What if we dial it up to 60? What if we dial it up to 65? Even more noise attenuation. Now, how does this work, you ask? Okay. So the way the isotope works, the way the CVox works, the way all these noise removal plugins work is through a methodology called spectral substitution, which the view from 10,000 feet for spectral substitution is that it takes the noise in your recording and it inverts the phase on the noise and then removes the noise from what you hear. Okay, pretty interesting. Because the signal that you put in, whether it's your voice or a guitar, those things change. The amplitude of your voice changes, but the noise floor should stay constant. Even if it's a refrigerator running in the background, that's a constant hum. That doesn't change. So what it does is it identifies that uh, static non a uh, dynamic element in your sound. And it inverts the phase on it, and you don't hear it, right? Wow, pretty interesting. And the way it does it, this is a, a, actually theoretically, spectral substitution has been around since 1979. It was published in a paper by S.F. Bowl in 1979. And it's taken this long, <laughs> it's taken four decades to get to the point where we can do it in real time. Now, how do we do it in real time? The way we do it in real time is through something called a Wiener filter, right? <laughs> it's called a Wiener filter, I swear. And the Wiener filter is a predictive algorithm that is able to identify the noise happening now so that it can the, the software can remove the noise as the noise comes in. See, it's a predictive model of the noise based upon past performance. Now look at this. When we get up here to 100% noise attenuation, it's pretty quiet. Right? So you hear that. But you also hear this. Now, now listen when I inhale. Now, you notice a big difference, and it seems like there is definitely something missing from that signal. And I'll tell you why. Even though this may seem like, wow, like magic, like this is perfect. Well, like most things that are perfect, the subtractive uh, spectral subtraction does have a flaw. And that is that theoretically, the way it works out 
This is just pure mathematics. The way it works out is that spectral substitution's main, well, hmm, let's see, drawback, is that the closer you get to removing the entire noise floor, so the closer you get to driving that noise floor to zero, the more it will degrade the overall quality of your sound. So if you can hear it here, as opposed to my voice here, now, again, right? Now, it sounds like there's a lot taken out in the low end. Right? So you may think, well, that's not so bad. But you know what, though? Compared to the sound, when you take the bypass out, right? I mean, it's definitely a fuller, richer sound. So what happens is you have essentially in a recording, you have your voice. Let's say it's a VO recording. You have your voice and you have noise. So together you have combined voice and noise. When you remove the noise, you're trying to get to clean voice. But you can't get completely to clean voice because, well, it's going to degrade your sound. Eventually what's going to happen is the signal portion of your uh, recording and the noise portion of your recording, some of those frequencies are going to overlap. And so the spectral substitution methodology will remove some of that uh, frequency response of your voice because it overlaps with that of the noise. Not necessarily optimal. But that's not bad, right? That's not bad. That works. Or does it? So here's the thing. You may think that this is an acceptable noise floor level for your recording, and that is your choice, okay? You may think this is an acceptable sound for your voice, for your signal, and that's your choice. But I still hear that noise, and that's not how I like to deliver VOs. So does this work, right? Or does it sound a little artificial and processed? I don't know, right? What do you think? Now, okay, so really there are three things on the table here. Do you just, do you take the CVOX out and rely on just an expander and a gate, right? Do you put the CVOX in, take the gate out, reduce the expander to the point where you can use them both? but you're using a lot less expansion, okay? That's option number two, okay? Or do you go with this? What is your choice? Now here, theoretically, that's all kind of interesting, but here's where we get to the real world nuts and bolts. Here's where the rubber hits the road. The CVOX plugin. I, I think this is really compelling. The CVOX plugin uses a lot of DSP, a lot of DSP. And so depending upon what's in your chain, you, you may run into DSP issues with the CVOX. Now, maybe you use it post-recording, so it's not really a problem. But it's a hungry beast, man. So really, is it worth the DSP usage? Probably, maybe, right? But the other thing is, it's 350 bucks. So again, is it better? Am I better off, right, doing this? Right, okay, the wheels on the bus, the wheels on the bus go round and round. Am I better off doing that? Am I better off doing this, right? Does that sound better? The wheels on the bus go round and round. Round and round, round and round. Or am I better off without the CVOX entirely and just going back to the way I do, th I do my VOs, right? So is, which one's better? Now, I can tell you that if I don't spend $349 on the CVOX, this is what I have. This is what I already have. So is it worth it to use it in conjunction with the DFC? Or is the DFC good enough? 
I want to know what you think. What do you think of the CVOX? What do you think of noise removal techniques overall? So, leave a comment. You know what to do. All right, until next time, this is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov, fading to black.